the blast of a ship's whistle in Halifax Harbour signal the beginning of a long voyage that would bring John Getty and his wife Charlotte to French Polynesia. There they would labor on the tiny island of Anitium, part of present-day Vanuatu, bringing the gospel to uh, people groups who had never heard of a loving God there among the New Hebrides Islands. The idyllic beauty of this earthly paradise obscured a very sinister side of life in many of the native communities. Cannibalism, human sacrifice, murder, treachery, were long entrenched ways of life on Anichim and the surrounding islands. The killing of unwanted babies was common, licentiousness was rampant, revenge was honored, infanticide was widespread, as was the murder of widows. When a man died, his wife was immediately strangled so that her spirit could accompany the spirit of her deceased husband into the next world. And many children, not able yet to take care of themselves, would suffer the same fate as their mother. John Getty had anticipated that the task would not be easy. In his parting message before the ship's departure from Halifax, on this day, November the 30th, in 1846, Getty declared, In accord with the Redeemer's command and assured of his presence, we are going forth to those lands where Satan has established his dark domain. I know that suffering awaits me, but to bear the Redeemer's yoke is an honor to one who has felt the Redeemer's love. Getty set out to master the language, reduce it to written form, producing materials to educate uh, the islanders, but he grew discouraged over the lack of progress of the gospel, and it was such hard work. He and his family were often attacked. They suffered much hardship. And then without warning, things changed in 1851, four years after their arrival. Several chiefs decided to convert to Christianity, gave their lives to the Lord. Suddenly, churches sprung up everywhere. Uh, 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 churches were overflowing. And little Anitium began to send missionaries out to the surrounding islands. John had always insisted that every convert was responsible to tell others. Pagan practices disappeared. They were replaced with trust and an honest life. The people of one island, hearing of the amazing transformation on Anichim, uh, sent over a pig with which to buy a Christian teacher who could come and share with them uh, this good news. John died in 1872 in Australia, and a plaque placed in his memory in the church of Agawat on Anichim, we read this. When he landed in 1848, there were no Christians. And when he left in 1872, there were no heathen. Oh, the wonderful power of the gospel. As Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free.